my good friend first off i'm the first lady erica and i'm here with my friends what are we gonna call you today lindell or what yes call, call me lindell we're gonna call you lindell and so everybody in the cw they know lindell but you didn't know lindell was such a mountain man did you <laughs> i'm loving your face <laughs> man. it looks really cool and um it's only just begun it's only just begun we've been having yeah. some great conversations and i put it out there that i wanted to talk about some natural healing and things you can do at home so that you can actually avoid the emergency room and avoid like having to go to the hospital sometimes because we know um to advocate for our care we have to first off start taking care of ourselves with prevention and then honestly, just learn healing. I mean, Linda, I know, I'm, I'm sure you agree with me, but when it comes to things like going to the hospital, like we didn't always have hospitals, but in a case of emergency, I guess this is what I was thinking about, like preparedness, right? Oh, back in the day, they went and seen the, the barber. What? Yeah, they did. Back in the day, they went to go see the barber for anything. You got a, a big old cut and you need stitched up, go to the barber shop. You didn't wow. know that? Uh, no, wow, that's a, a new one. They didn't even do that. Wow, really? They didn't even do that on really? Andy Griffith, yeah. on Andy Griffith bro. <laughs> so, Lindell, you said, you know, back in the day, you, you're kind of living a country life. What? Tell me yeah. about, like, how you got started anyway, like, are you, you know, have you always been living out in the country? Like, what was your yeah. life like? Well, I was born in Ohio, Dayton, born in the city. But as soon as I was born there, my family decided to move down here and get out of that city life because it was pretty bad at the time anyway. So uh, I was pretty much raised a country boy and I've always played in the dirt and always been out in nature, climbing trees, doing what boys do best you know so um yeah uh doing in doing so i've come across you know many things you know hurting myself obviously one thing but also healing myself in the process so i don't have to go home <laughs> oh right so that all being said let's see what, tell me just a little bit about the healing process. Is it something that your family was into? Like, were they into growing their own food? Or what's kind of like the background of how your family? Honestly, uh, it was more like a community thing. Like, the people that I was surrounded by was always doing these kinds of things. So I was just like, I don't know, I guess it was naturally presented to me and i just performed with them you know mm -hmm. as far as making your own wine stepping on all those grapes to make your own wine and doing all that kind of stuff when i was a wee lad i mean i'm not kidding y'all didn't have but, a still uh, out there did you huh you didn't have a still out there did you did you have a still oh, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> okay you guys was doing it for real then okay yeah uh, we still do okay <laughs> least, uh, i don't think now nobody will bother you right like oh i don't yeah. care that's yeah. why i just said I use my know. use my last name that's all <laughs> cool so i mean do you feel like is the, the community was it like a native american type community like what kind of community is that well uh there was one individual that was native american but he he had to go by a uh, spanish name his name was uh, sonny rodriguez 
he's a very big influence on me growing up ever since I was little. These these were all my dad's friends that were my influences for the most part growing up as a kid because my dad was pretty much my babysitter. Oh, but wow. anyway, sorry about that. Hold on. Okay, cool. I Somebody was- tried calling me. Okay. Oh, Sonny Rodriguez. That's a freaking cool name. So what was, I mean. Yeah, even though it wasn't his real name. <laughs> okay. But anyway, he's a tree man. He he cuts trees for a living. And he oh. still does it. He climbed out. Oh, man, you should see the kinds of things that he does. It's pretty amazing. I like I'm talking that. huge trees. Because I, I like um, I like the patterns that the wood makes. Like, do you do any woodwork and things like that, or? Oh yeah, yeah, all kinds of stuff like That's that. That's why you got that CNS machine. So what are some yeah, of the uh, CNC. Yeah, CNC. Yeah, CNC. Yeah. I always so say that's it just, on that's, CNC machine. That's actually metal work, but you can make. There are CNC uh, wood making machines too, and I've actually built several of those too when I was uh, actually. When I was 19, 20, I built some of those things. I've been in this kind of business for a long time. As far as uh, working on cars and machinery, I can dissect anything and put it back together better. Okay, I'm going to have to talk to you about wood planers and all that stuff. Because I was waiting and I was like, man, I really want a planer. And I want an infuser. I want to like do all my stuff at home. Because, you know, I do resin work. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. I work with resin and I wanted to be able to make those tables with the resin. At least yeah, yeah, all yeah, yeah. one or something. Get the hand scraper and stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the planer. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, don't think of that machine that you slide it through. Yeah, you want the machine. You want to be easy on it. But yeah, look at the. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's too much work. It's a lot for these <laughs> hands. It's a lot for these hands, you know. I save them. Oh, you do. <laughs> like I save them. <laughs> I'm just pulling around. So I guess what we could do is get into some of your tips, things that you think can help people. But I know too, the other day, then your baby got hurt in the roof of the mouth. And yeah. What did you figure so, out about that? That they wouldn't do a damn thing. Right. There's some injuries and, and, though, that can't be, there's nothing they yeah, can do. Yeah, they the said you'd have to go to an oral surgeon to get it stitched up. And by then it was already two days later. I'm like, well, what good does that do? And then like the pediatrician said, oh, well, it's healed up. I'm like, well, yeah, because I, you know, pretty much gave him a bigger passy and, and he just kept his tongue pushed up on top of it and it closed it up. And all, all he did was just puncture his uh, puncture off puncture a hole through his uh flap there's a flap in between your nasal cavity and your esophagus and he just punctured a hole through oh, that, that. Was pretty far okay that was pretty far back then yeah but it's on the top of your uh yeah, mouth the top, the yeah. so if you don't understand he had one of those little dinosaurs that that yeah opened, opened a little the thing mouth. just and the squeeze it in the heads all like, and rah, rah, he hit the little rah, boy rah. in the top of the mouth so he had an injury to the top of the mouth. But from my understanding, I guess from dental surgery, they always say that the mouth is the fastest part of the body to heal, right? Yeah, it does. It heals yeah. really fast. And because yeah, we don't get stitches in our mouth really, right? I, I would give him uh, just a little bit of uh, salt in his apple juice, you know, warm it up a little bit and that help, you know, seal it up, keep it from getting infected and all that stuff. And just made sure that he ate a whole bunch of liquids type stuff like yogurt and uh, whatever. And then you had one uh, like you showed me where you it looked like you almost cut your finger off. <laughs> yeah, it's healed up now. Yeah. I don't even know if you can see it. Yeah. So was that the scene um the oh, scene machine that you was using? How'd you do that with a saw or what? It's pretty <laughs> swollen. No, my knife closed up on me. And then about oh. cut the tip of my finger off. My fingernail stopped it from going all the way through. <laughs> right. It was oh, pretty wow. bad. It was horrible. Oh, gosh. But that was just uh, not even two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. It's all the way healed up now. Yeah. I've, I've done it, too. 
what I've done is like, say the, the car door, I smashed my finger in there. I was jumping off the back of a truck. And so I, <laughs> I had my hand there and the girl closed the door and I was calm and I was like, open the door, my hand is in the door. And they were like, how could you be so calm? Cause I said, if I would have screamed, you wouldn't have opened the door. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? You'd be freaking out. Like, oh God, what am I gonna do? Cause that's what happens. People get in that mode, that's in instinct. And they're like, oh, uh, 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 help me please. <laughs> yeah. Had you ever had to deal with any bone breaks or anything like that? Oh yes. Um, I've had, this wrist broken three times and this one broken twice. This one, I don't know. You see that? Oh, what's that moving? What's what's up with that? Uh, there's two bones that connect up to your wrist or whatever. But I mean, I've dealt with that ever since I was uh, 12, I think. They never, they never said it. Like, did they ever straighten it back out and said it? No, or? I guess, I guess like the tissue or whatever is just, ripped right there to where that bone is not connected there unless i tense up my muscles and flex really hard to pick up something heavy i have to do that to keep that from popping out of place right you have it's to pretty really wild. yourself to do something heavy mm -hmm. it's a uh, all mind over matter kind of thing have you ever punched somebody with that oh yeah so you can punch somebody with that and you're good to go oh yeah i fuck somebody up <laughs> okay. Any uh, more bone breaks? Any my my son actually had that where it was it was back here, like so it was here. Oh yeah, broke right there. We were in Chick Fil A when he was seven, and he did some type of jump off of the little seat and did a little tumble, and then I heard him holler, and then I went in there, and he was like. I broke my arm and I was like, no way you broke your arm. And then I saw the big U shaped thing right there. And Ooh, then I was, was like, a bunch of women came and they like held me down and they put some cardboard and laid it on his arm and they called 911 because I was just petrified. Like, mm. no way. I would be it. too. Oof. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, who's um, more scared one thing of? that happened yeah. to me, one thing that happened to me, uh, I think I was about eight years old. Uh, I was riding on this four wheeler and it flipped over and landed on top of me, me acting stupid and it landed on top of my knee and my leg hyper extended. Oh, I hate that. Ugh. And once I saw that, I instantly just, whoa, bam hit it as hard as I could and popped it back into place and crawled all the way back home. Oh. Oh. Crawled home. Yeah. And my mom had just taken my brother to the orthodontist. I'm the only one that hasn't had to have braces. Everybody else has had to have braces in my family. My mom's even had to have jaw reconstruction surgery whenever she was uh, I think 19 or 20 something like that but i've got all my wisdom teeth and but anyway back to that he she she had to, to have somebody else take him to the orthodontist and then take me to the emergency room because i was so messed up and they didn't they couldn't do nothing for me they didn't do no surgery uh the next time i seen him he, he was like, what the hell happened? And all I had done was pulled my, pretty much the back of my foot to uh, the inside of my leg. And I just pulled it all the way back and it clicked. And then I extended it all the way out as far as I could. And when I did that, it clicked again and it just popped back into place. And all of that happened, I guess, was that I tore my ACL or, or something else along the way but it still comes out of place every now and again <laughs> and i have to right. pay attention i have to pay attention to how i walk because mm -hmm. even just the way i walk if i walk a certain way it'll pop out of place mm. so it's just that's been with me my whole life there's just some things that can't they just can't do anything about like it 
if you fall on your tailbone, what they're going to do, you know, if you break your pinky toe, what are they, there's mm-hmm. nothing that they can do. Even yep. with my son, it's something that I or his father probably could have done if we just, one of us held him and the other person held him and basically do what the doctor yeah, just, did, was just pull it all the way out and put it back and then put yeah. something around it so it didn't move. And basically that's all they did, that and x-rays. That shit still makes me cringe, but we got to encourage everybody not to cringe. Not don't to cringe. cringge. Don't, don't freak cringe. out. Don't, don't yeah. freak out. <laughs> That's it. You don't panic. Was that, I was just like, I was so still that I was, I, I can remember just not even trying to breathe that hard. I just wanted to, and I just wanted to be, yeah. still, even in the ambulance, I just sat there bet, like that. That's scary. And, and now I see that. Especially your own child, your own baby. It's like, oh God, no! What? Yeah, that's a jailable offense, you know. Depending on, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you could go to jail for your own kids getting hurt. But um, yeah, that's crazy. you know what I thought was interesting about his injury too. He, I, the the paramedics asked him how much pain you were in on a scale of one to ten. So they used the pictures, and he still had a smile on his face. When was he in pain? When they put it back. That's when they did the pulling part and the pushing part. That's when he was in pain. And uh, but man, he was a trooper. He was just there. He wasn't crying. He had like a tear, but he was very strong. Yeah. I was so impressed at seven. Yeah, man. And what I did notice was that after that, he was like, when other kids come around him, he was like protective of his injury. And he was like, back <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> you know, I got a cast. Back up. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I think you can I write your name on it, but that's yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. So those are good. Anything else you had to take care of with your kids? Do one else? Any other good ones you had to take care of with your kids? Because oh, uh, well, Scarlett, she's all, always getting hurt. Uh, I remember this one time. Uh, the main thing is, is just for kids, the only thing you can do for them is ice if they get a bad noggin on uh you know boo boo on their noggin or something she had this big huge roll i mean it was just like a, a rock pretty much on her forehead one time and all we could do was just put an ice pack on it and it got better instantly so i mean it, it's amazing uh what the power of thought can do too and faith and and it being okay it's just you know just give it this little time this little energy with this ice pack everything will be okay just breathe just focus on your breathing get your heart rate down baby it's okay just breathe you know that kind of thing it's good to do that and encourage kids your babies to focus on their breathing realize what they're doing you know realize their peripheral vision what's in the peripherals and and whatnot and stuff like that and just uh it's good for everybody to do that, honestly. But, uh. <laughs> the only other thing that I could think of, like specifically with kids at home, it's like uh, when they catch a fever and it's the same thing, you're going to get them some, maybe some uh, Tylenol, Pedialyte, Pedi- 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 and then what? Yeah. Put them in an the ice bath. The quickest thing, get the temperature yeah. down and get that ice bath going. And I've had to do that for my son at least twice. Yeah, I don't know. And if they don't like ice bath, just get a, a hot bath of uh, water ready and just do a cold shower real quick and then, you know, let them chill out in the, in the warm bath because that helps too. Because what it does is it, yeah, when you it'll regulate you up and in, a, in a warm bath. When you're in a warm bath, though, it'll uh, that hotness will regulate to that temperature that you're at. And as it cools off, you cool off almost simultaneously, like instantly, instead of just that instant rush. Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. So let and me- it's also good. To, it's, it's very good to have a cold shower every now and again. I heard for headaches and sinus problems, too, that you could take a cold shower. That and just to uh, enter that state of mind mm. to uh, overcome it. To overcome it and know yeah, that because, know you can overcome it yeah i think we are just become extremely comfortable these days mm. with having the temperature just right 
But yeah, I've seen people walking barefoot in the snow. There's one guy who's just like, yeah, like you have to toughen up your body so you can take yes. things because we, you know, if we're was all- it, Was that same dude getting in the uh, ice water and, and breathing and holding his breath and shit like that? I don't know how far he I can't remember his it. name. Steven? I can't remember. No, I don't I think he, he was, was actually Russian. in the raw meat too though. He was also doing that raw meat challenge thing. Uh-huh. Which a lot of people maybe are vegan or a lot of people are against raw meat, but I have seen people who actually seen the benefits of the raw meat when it comes to weight loss and and uh I guess when you want to build my body tissue. I know, I know, I know. I guess, I guess, whatever. That's gross. I mean, I've seen people drink urine, too, on Facebook. I've seen a dude that drank urine, so he was talking about the vagal nerve and urine. It's good for you. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, I'm not promoting it. I'm just telling you, if you want to find stuff, it's Don't out there. Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. Semen retention. <laughs> That's another thing people are talking about, like, you know, getting into mm. some semen retention, so. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to encourage anybody listening to get addicted to anything. That's right, sure. right, right. But you know, Just, I was mind asking him so what happened when you ate that meat, but he's he, you know, I think sometimes too people get to be like into a little bit of fanaticism. I've had I've had um uh what was it? Well I can't remember the terminology, grass fed beef. Grass fed oh, beef. Oh yeah. And that's got a weird taste to it. And it's almost like discouraging because what have we been eating this whole time to make me think that that tastes fucking weird? You know what I mean? Mm. That you've gotten so used to, you've been used to what is normal is actually yeah. not normal. So, yeah. Yeah, what a well, now, actually I've taken. had grass-fed beef, and it, it's supposed to be the best thing you can ever eat, right? Why does it taste so kind of like vegan shit? You know so, what I mean? So what do you like think vegan about vegan, be, being a vegan and stuff like that? Because I guess like people say like, you can be a vegetarian or a vegan because if a cow can come to full weight eating raw, and grass um, yeah they got what six stomachs filling up six stomachs every day in grass yeah dang yeah then, then it means <laughs> we could also get just as much nutrients from raw food as well but we're not eating raw most of the time we're not eating raw food we're most of the vegetables we're we eating need to be cooked vegetables so yeah it's all cooked and stuff yeah which that's okay too I mean, that yeah. just brings out flavor. That's all. Right? I yeah. love I love steamed broccoli and, and stuff like that. That is so delicious. Asparagus. Yeah. Ooh, I don't asparagus. see myself eating a raw broccoli. I don't see it. No, raw but, broccoli. I used to when I was a kid. I used to eat uh, a whole head of lettuce. I just rinse it off and eat the whole thing of lettuce when I was a little kid. I, I did stupid things. Eat a whole bell pepper. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't care. I'd eat a tomato. Eat it like an like apple. An apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't matter. But these roots and herbs that you prepared for us, those are going to make up for well, whatever we're, you know, some of the things we're deficient in, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show them. I'm going to show okay. everybody. This beautiful PowerPoint that that you made. Look at that. So natural healing, mm-hmm. Native American and other traditions for healing the body. So I'll go ahead and when you're ready for me to hit the next slide, then I'll just tell me next slide, okay? Okay, cool. So what do you want to tell us about this? The Native American. So this is Native American medical herbs that I have come across that are very beneficiary for the human body and uh, that are not very well known at all and neglected in in a way that like take for instance this blackberry uh how did how did this information about all the potassium and and such that this thing contains 
go missing all the vitamins and minerals and, and even cough syrup that you can make from it. How'd that information just be, you know, disappeared from from the medical books, you know? So this is this is the kind of thing that uh, we're going to be looking into. And uh, OK, so blackberry used for treating almost everything, including an upset stomach, strengthening the immune system. It's can cancer prevention, improving digestion and better heart functioning. So this thing is uh, really good for like blood pressure and, and things like that nature, too. Uh, you can make a tea from its roots, so its roots are also benefit uh, beneficiary to help with swelling joints and tissues. And if you make a detoxin uh, from its roots, thus sweeten with maple syrup or honey, and you let it ferment, you know, within time, uh, you'll get a syrup for treating a cough. That's true. Uh, I guess with the, I never thought about the cough medicine, and I like I like throwing blackberries into my drinks and stuff like that. I mean, these are things you can toss these things inside your salads and or yeah. just eat them. You know, yeah. it's funny. a lot of people get mad, like when their mm. kids won't eat meat or like like when they won't eat what's for dinner, and I'm like, well, what if my son just eats a watermelon for dinner? I'm okay with yep. that. What if he yep. just ate a whole thing of strawberries for dinner? I'm okay exactly. with that. Exactly. Not that big a deal. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, we need to eat more fruits and have yeah. more fruits in the fridge for sure. Let me see. What is the next? Okay. One? Next slide. Oh, uh, you this just said all that. Yeah. Th yeah. This is, uh, you know, vitamins A, C, B, 6, E, and K. I don't even know what K is, but okay. <laughs> I think um, K, K. Uh, that kind of regulates your blood and and this is guys this is just information that i i did really fast in a very fast time okay it was i don't know it just came to me okay very easily and anybody i encourage everybody to do this and 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 research their for their, their own problems and, yeah. and such like that Actually, their own remedies Actually, K is important. It's just what I thought, too, because K actually regulates your blood. Post-synthesis modification of proteins in your blood. So K allows your blood to coagulate properly. Yeah. So if you don't have, okay. um, if you have a K deficiency, say you get a cut or an injury, you're, you have nothing to clot your blood. You won't, you know, so the blood clots are the things that stops you from bleeding. <laughs> And it starts to repair of the tissue. So it sounds wow. like it's not really anything big, but K is very important. You know, that's why a lot of people have to, you know, they have to take warfarin and all that stuff. Wow. That's good. Yeah. I was, you're doing, your co pilot is a, a ex lab technician. Didn't know that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's but, awesome. That's yeah. cool. Hey, thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you very much. I still remember a little something from the lab. <laughs> That's good. Okay, goldenrod. Have you guys ever seen a goldenrod weed plant just growing out in the wilderness? I don't think we would know. How beneficiary this stuff is. Oh, my. It's it's wild. Now, a lot of this stuff is things that you can walk through, uh, you know, nature and just find walking right by it and this is in america uh hence native american type stuff. okay you know what we hear goldenrod the color right and then uh -huh. seals the 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 pill golden seals like i've always heard of that but i didn't know goldenrod was a plant oh yeah it's it's i guess they call it like a weed I don't know. but it is actually very beneficiary for you uh, commonly thought of today as a source of aller uh, um, allergies and sneezing, it was actually considered another all-in-one medicine by Native Americans as a tea. In addition to food and topical salve, it is used to treat conditions from bronchitis and chest congestion to colds, flu, inflammation, sore throats, and as an anesthetic for cuts and 
aspirations. So if you had a cut or anything like that, they would chew on it in their mouth and put that on the cut to help mend it, keep it from bleeding. This is a wild because it's a weed where people might sneeze, but it helps with bronchitis. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So, that's very and you can make a topical salve with it. You know what salve is, right? Yeah, yeah, the ointment. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit tripped out because I guess the thing is when you sneeze and your nose runs, it's actually helping you decongest. Yes, it so is. We interpret the weed. You're getting it sense. out of your system. You get right. it out. And you never want to swallow a sneeze or snot or mucus. You want to get that stuff out. Get it out as much as possible. That's the only way you'll get better. So it's funny, too, that we take things that look like weeds and we want to cut them and burn them and and not even is just the yeah not even it. reconsider the fact that it could be beneficiary right so we gotta mm -hmm. really start paying attention to the medicine that's in our backyard yeah yeah so this next one what is a it buck, buck br uh, brush what? okay it's a hummingbird pl blossom used for picture? healing is that uh, the picture in the background yeah okay okay yeah I'm a little slow. <laughs> it's okay. It's used for uh, the healing of uh, forbus tumors, cysts, mouth throat problems, and inflammation. It simulates kidney functions. Uh, used to treat enlarged uh, lip nodes, hemorrhoids, inflamed tonsils, enlarged spleens, and uh, menstrual bleeding. Use the leaf and flowers in boiling water for about five minutes and then drink it while it is still warm. And that's how uh, the Indians would prepare it. And it's it's amazing how uh, some of these things, you can use the roots, uh, not this particular plant, but the one, uh, one of the ones before, you can use the roots for tea and stuff and it's it's just amazing time. and i think you'll find that amazing on this next one here yes. uh, cattail okay all right oh yeah i remember seeing these yeah they <laughs> should be around you quite frequently because if uh you're um you're in south carolina well no you're right i when i was in south carolina i did used to see these all the time i'm in florida now oh well you might still see them yeah, I yeah maybe I got a hmm. Okay, almost each part of the plant can be used for uh, medicinal purposes, except for the seed heads. Okay, so the thing you just so what the big the big fluffy part that can't be yeah. used. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Its root can be pre uh, prepared like potatoes, mashed or boiled for treating sore sores and burns. Oh. Isn't that weird? The seeds. Is, I've never pulled one to even see those big lumpy roots. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you everybody's so uh, weirded out, they probably wouldn't even touch it. Yeah, I don't remember doing anything with them. Hmm. I, I did. Hmm. I'm missing the <laughs> <laughs> I grow around ponds and stuff. The seed down from its flower can be used to treat a uh, diaper rash or any kind of skin rash, inflammation, I inflation. Love this. Yeah. I love this. Isn't this is cool? something that you know, like we know you can use weeds, but then it's not like we actually go out and do it. And I never would have guessed anything about this cattail thing. I'm kind of wondering. I love weed. Who are the people who used it first to figure out what it was good for? Like, how did they feel? <laughs> now, this uh, one. Oh, have you ever seen these walking, hiking in the trails on my how benefit? Okay, the leaves and uh, stems in this plant are rich in minerals and vitamins, while the roots are high in starch and can be also be used like a, a potato. 
Nasty taste, but very rich in calories. Good for long journeys. Used as a mild dur uh, tick and a blood purifier in the treatment of urinary uh, infections. It, its leaves make a tea to help with arthritis as well. And this is the green briars. It's a sticker. It's a sticker bush, but it's got this. You got to pay attention to the leaves. Okay. You got to uh -huh. pay attention to the shape and, and the design of the leaves and its structure. And before you, you know, go ahead and get your tea for arthritis and whatnot. <laughs> we need to have a foraging trip where we could walk. I, you know, I wanted to do that for a retreat once where, you know, maybe not everybody wants to just sit and meditate, but to actually take like a hike through the woods and go through with someone who could identify the different plants. I just yeah. think that would be like the coolest thing. Identify the different kinds of birds. And, and what's, in, or not. what's important to know is uh, the Indians, how they, uh, you know, made it last and how they always had these herbs and, and medicines and, and whatnot was because they always picked the third plant. They would leave the other two and pick the third plant. Therefore, next year or next time they would go to harvest, you know, the, there would be another plant. So then they would get the next plant, you know, that would be mature enough to cut down, to use. Wow. How of its I, benefits. I also heard, um, I heard someone else uh, talk about their grandfather and they, they were talking about the first life of the plant. How he would literally sometimes eat the plant while it was still attached to the tree. So it was still connecting like the life energy of that whole tree. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, quit. So now we're used barking. to having things in the refrigerator for a week, you know, so we're not getting all the life out of the plant because it's so far from when it was picked. Yeah, it's depleted, deplete, beginning depleted in a way. And and you can also germinate a lot of uh, different types of plants and trees and everything. You can actually what you do is you uh, either cut off the top or a, a lower limb and you get this germinating compound or you can just do it naturally with your own natural compound compost pile of whatever you can think of. Banana peels, uh, you know, just compost. Right. And um, coffee, coffee is a good compost for uh, roses. We got a lot of rose bushes around my house. But anyway, um, yeah, you just germinate them, and there you go. Bam! There's you another duplicate of that plant, and you just wait until it, you know, gets potential enough to. So you you're, you're saying something. a couple of magic words, and there's a company that we won't name that <laughs> it's kind of the reason why we're in trouble right now. I believe in buying um, heirloom seeds and this company sells seeds to the farmers, but because they have a patent on the seeds, they want their seeds back. <laughs> they want the seeds from your plant back. At one point, this is what I was learning. You know, like they own these seeds. Um, and, screw and, you, man. That's that's so beat up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why? Why be like that? That's horrible. Right. And so what you're talking about is germinating heirloom seeds. So that means he, his grandmother might have had this plant and it seeded and they created a new plant and it seeded and it created a new plant. And that's what you call an heirloom, like a family heirloom is mm. passed down. So the seed is actually passed down. So mm -hmm. what Fendel is talking about is making your own heirloom seeds. And I believe that in buying heirloom seeds. So I bought a bunch. Now you make me want to go call the seed guy and, and have him talk about heirloom seeds. And then, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd Heck be yeah. great. Oh, the, uh, the blue lotus flower is a beautiful, beautiful flower. And it's also used for herbs and teas. I don't know if I said that one over here. We no, were live yet or not. It. Okay. No, you didn't. But blue lotus is amazing because th that's on the walls of the um of the pyramids. 
Yes. On the ladies' heads, like when they put it on their head, mm-hmm. they let the oil come down from the from the lotus. Yeah, they oil. probably use it for shampoo and stuff or something. Who knows, right? I know they smell good, right? <laughs> Flowers. <laughs> I smell yeah. like roses. Mm. So now I put up this one that you had the red. Oh, okay. Clover. Yeah, red clover. Yes. Okay. Now this is everywhere. This is clover, you know, the four leaf or the four uh Oh. clover you know this is what the flower looks like most of the time okay now huh. it grows everywhere and the flowers leaves and roots are usually infused in a tea or used to top food it is used to uh, manage inflammation improve circulation and uh, treat respir- uh, respiratory conditions so uh, you know, this is just another thing that people take for granted. I mean, wow. Never knew that, right? I didn't. Me either. I run these, I run these things over every time the motor goes. That's what I'm saying. We. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen the flower pop off on a clover. Dandelions too, y'all. Dandelion, yeah. root tea, and... Oh my man, that stuff is really good for you, especially for like uh, urinary tract infections and, and your liver and, and all of that. That's uh, well, one thing I've that heard I heard dandelion put on there. tea really strengthens your heart. So people who are having yes, heart yes, heart dandelion is, and it's everywhere. That's right? funny because and Jermaine swears by it because his mom actually used it, and after she was using it for some time, they told her she didn't have to have a surgery. See, hey, I've never had surgery in my entire life. Never will. Oh wow! My back's been broken twice. Oh wow! Mint. mint. Yeah, mint is in everything, man. I love. Oh yeah, but I love the the real mint. Ah, oh, when I'm out here, sometimes in the garden, I always just pick a little leaf off and just chew on it, just to you know, walk around chewing on some mint. Why not? It's used in teas for its numerous antioxidants. It's uh, phosphorus, magnesium, uh, potassium, vitamin C, A, calcium, and fiber can be crushed as well as made into uh, ornaments or even added in, Mm -hmm. in the bath to calm down itchy skin. See, that's something that I never knew. Uh, the mixture of leaves and stems can be used for high blood pressure. Hmm. Chew no on them leaves. If, no if, if you got cows. high blood so pressure, happy. chew on them leaves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no wonder cows are so happy. Oh, yeah. They probably eat a lot of it, too. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. This one. That's the one. What about it? What about it? That's the one oh, you yeah. can take those cigarettes out it of. It is. It is. You can smoke this stuff if you wanted to, but I, I don't take that from me. I am not a, uh, what is it, no, physician? You, you can take it from me. You can smoke it. We've smoked it <laughs> because we rolled mulling mu- mu- and the other word, it's uh, Dan. I'll come up well, with that. Look what it does for you. It soothes chest congestion and asthma. If you burn the leaves and its roots of its herb and inhale the smoke, it will calm your lungs, soothing the mucous membranes due to its anti-inflammatory features for joints and tissues. Flowers are used in tea that contains a lot of mild uh, side effects. So you might hallucinate. I think is what they're saying. You might or, see, you might see something really good that you need to see. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do people use it to help stop smoking cigarettes, they use it to help. Well, they no. use it in place of mar- marijuana, like right. So yeah. if if you smoke marijuana or you have that, uh, you might want to try a blend of this shit. You can try and a not blend just of this. not just mullen neither. No, no, take some mullen and some. Uh, 
blue lotus flower too, right? Blue lotus and demonia. Dem no. I don't know how to say it. It's D-A-M-I-A-N-A. -A -A. I know what you're talking about. And I can never say that word, but I I have Me neither. I, can, I got them in the cabinet. I got them all rolled up still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I was trying to help somebody and they weren't feeling good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that stuff is good stuff. Lots of stuff you can do with it. You have to check, though, because there's some herbs that can be smoked and some that can yes. be ingested and some that yes. are not for internal use at all. Yes, please do your own research before you get it. Read the comments on the product before you buy the product, whatever you can do before you get it. <laughs> Now, you know what I also learned, too, about essential oils, that essential oils can be taken internally and externally, but the FDA does not allow you to advertise a product that can be used internally. Like, they won't, they yeah. won't sign off on something being put out as both. So they'll... so Because they're afraid does, somebody's going to end up chugging the shit. Right. So if you find some essential oils, they'll say, oh, this is only external. And then they'll give you some essential oils. They'll say, oh, it's only internal because the FDA. So you have to do research beyond what's on the label because the FDA will not allow them to do both. They won't allow that to be written on a package. Yeah. Right. So now we got this good stuff. Now this stuff is used to treat diarrhea, oh. sore throat, and fevers by making a detoxin from the bark of the tree, okay? Qualoga is what it's called, sumac. Sumac, okay? okay? Uh, and this is, like I said, to identify these things, get several pictures of what it is, and, uh, you know, pay attention to the details of the leaves and the bark and, and all of that before before you just go out to some random tree and get this bark and start chewing on it. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, crush the leaves. Uh, crush the leaves and flowers into an <laughs> ornament to treat poison ivy. And if you uh, include it into your daily diet, it will help uh, you to lower your cholesterol levels. So that's very, uh, very good information. And, and this stuff is around here in America. America. OK, I know it sounds like it's Japanese or something, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, this so stuff is out. You can tell what people, what, what items are good for based on the color. Green usually seems to be um, the, the lungs, right? And the, the throat. Yeah. And the yeah. You know, the lungs and the throat and red seems to be like the red fruit for the heart and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah blood really kind of thing, cholesterol. I can't say if I've ever seen a leaf like this before. I'm not sure. So. Oh, you have. It's just uh, it's probably the picture I took and oh. placed on there or whatever. I put in. It's just a little pretty. A little bit prettier than the other pictures. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, this one is not in America. Okay. This one uh, originates from Colombia. Okay. Mm. Moringa. Moringa is awesome. And I, I know of Moringa because of my Colombian friend, uh, my tattoo artist. He's, he, he's from Colombia. I think he's down there in Florida right now. But anyway, uh, he came back. Vis uh, from visiting Colombia one one time and uh, was telling me about Moringa and, and all the benefits and how great he feel, felt and all this, that, and other. And he gave me some and I tried some of it and I was just like, wow, very knocked out of my shoes, like with amazement and, and good health and just everything. I felt great, amazing. Okay, the uh, so anyway, the leaves have seven times more vitamin C than oranges, mm -hmm. and it's fifteen uh, and fifteen times more uh, potassium than bananas. Okay, so that's that's pretty amazing. Um, it also has calcium, protein, ion, and amino acids packed with antioxidants. It's good for blood pressure and fat in the blood and body. So it's good for burning fat. And it's good for your uh, fat in the blood as well to burn that 
out. Keep it out. And just pretty much detox like your like body. Weight loss and and building muscle and cleaning up your 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 arteries. Looks like. Yes. And it slows down cancer growth and can heal stress and inflammation of the brain. So this is a, I guess, this is really good for any kind of fluid that's in your body. It's just really good for that. Because like, look at it, it. It's slowing down the cancer growth cells. All Any kind of cells, cancer cells that's in your body, they'll probably deplete if you consume this stuff enough right, right. Uh, throughout a period of time right that sounds good oh i love honeysuckle me too this is I one of the things that i hours. i engulged and, and for hours i mean i would just sit there and pick them right off the side of the, the four-wheeler yeah, trail right? and just, yes just eat them and eat them and eat them the yellow ones are the best. They taste the best. And what yeah. I'd do is I'd pick the, I'd pick it up. You know, you pick the flower, right? You pick it right off. And then it's got this little green bottom to it. And you see that little mushroom looking thing on the top? Little, um, it's like a mushroom, okay? But uh, what you do is you hold it in the center of it. And you pick at the bottom. And you pinch it, right? And you pull that little mushroom thing that's at the top through the inside of the flower and you'll get this honey substance and you can eat it and it is so delicious it is so good mm -mm -mm. and it's very and in my own experience i grew up uh playing in poison ivy and oak and all that all the time i was rolling in it pretty i did everything but eat it okay and the reason why I didn't, it did not affect me at that time was because of this plant right here. Oh. This plant grows right beside of um, uh, poison. It grows right beside a poison oak and poison ivy and all that stuff everywhere. Oh. Wow. Everywhere there's poison, there's honey. Uh, if you want to dare yourself to play with some poison oak and uh, and try it out, I don't know. <laughs> We're, I, I'm not. I wouldn't recommend it. it. No. But you don't, know, don't you recommend it. that was just from my experience. my child experience. Yeah, that's just his experience. But uh, I'm gonna put that disclaimer out there. But definitely something to look up and research to, to go deeper with you guys to exactly. Ooh, kava, kava. Okay, kava, kava. This is something that I just found here recently. Okay, um, kava, kava. This comes from the South Pacific. Uh, relieves anxiety, supports weight loss, gets rid of uh, uh, premature aging, soothes menopause symptoms, aids sleep, muscular uh, muscle relaxer, prevents headaches, improves kidney health, and fights cancer, and it's like alcohol. So these people down in the South Pacific, I can't, for, uh, I can't remember what the tribe is, I forget, but um, they use this as a alcohol drink, like a alcohol beverage, and that's what they, this is what they consume every day. And uh, it's made up from the roots. They squish the roots and beat the roots and mix it with this water. And it's it's gross because it's, it looks like it's nothing but dirt, but it's not. It's it's actually very very beneficial for for yourself and and your health. And it's almost like uh, you know I'd rather drink this nowadays than drink what they're putting in alcohol drinks th these days, kind of thing just to get a buzz if you wanted to. Oh, you mean like that kind of alcohol? <laughs> yeah, alcohol beverage. Okay, wow. So it'll give you a buzz. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see, oh, yeah, I think we had a conversation about this. Monatomic gold. Yeah. This stuff is interesting. This is what the gods used, so-called gods. They're just our uh, uh, galactic brothers and sisters. And so. uh, 
increase energy levels. It helps your balance, improves memory, brain function, and intelligence, uh, activating the higher senses with constant use of it. Some are able to unlock dormant senses like clairvoyance and tel uh, telepathy. Crystallized spiritual uh, evolution, it acts on the uh, pituitary gland, inducing a hominodal production, thus offering anti-aging support, increasing alpha brainwave production through an electromagnetic, that's important there, uh, <laughs> modality that harmonizes the two hemispheres of the brain, okay? Now, we had that meditation the other week, uh, Divine Masculine. Oh, man, that, that meditation was amazing. Now, um, what's interesting about me is uh, I was in this car wreck in 2020, and that's pretty much when I was awakened to this whole Trump and child trafficking bullshit. But I've been awakened spiritually to this whole galactic kind of confederation thing going on above us and mm -hmm. you know throughout the mind's eye mm -hmm. uh and the consciousness of every individual um i've been that way my entire life i've never not known how to be myself and and know how to depict people and, and nitpick them and you know just really get down to uh the truth right. and uh but anyway, I got in this really bad car wreck and it broke my lower back and right there uh, at my hip bone. And ever since I've had this Kundalini feeling, this plasma like energy running up my spine and I can control it. It's been long enough now. I've meditated with it and, and, and now I can control it. I can make my hair grow or not grow, but stand up you know on almost on impact and uh i've focused on my chi i'm, I'm a mixed mar uh, i do mixed martial arts and stuff like that and i, I know all about chi and, and stuff like that so once this kind of motion kind of happened to me i instantly knew oh my god is this my kundalini you know happening from this trauma and i believe it is because there's no other explanation uh to you know call for it. this sensation going up my spine that i can control i can make it either stop or continue to flow up through my head or i can make it go through my arms and come from my feet and out of my arms you know at one point i studied that 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 happens naturally i'm sure we can you know over time it's been suppressed like you it's, said but uh, that it happens naturally on the 28 day cycle along with the moon. Like, so it, it has um, the moon cycle uh, tells us like basically when this happens, like you can do it yourself. We're pretty much having it suppressed, but based on the moon cycle, it there's this trail like Jacob's ladder where the that Kundalini awareness goes up the spine and back down again through the mm -hmm. 33 vertebrae of the spine. So, mm -hmm. and I, I get it when the first time when you start to meditate and you start to feel like the sensation, that's why we focus on relaxing the feet and then feeling it in your hips and relax and then allowing those feelings to go up. Because I'm sorry, I feel it like when we, if we do meditations and healing sessions and stuff like that, and I'm like, lighten up. And I can feel it. It's like, yeah, man. Man. it's such a great feeling. It really is. So and, uh, there's there's ways you can uh, you know find that golden light energy that make that ball. And this is all with imagination. Imagination is key, everybody. Imagination is the main key to a lot of this. Um, that's how you can manifest your reality. You visualize it. You continue to visualize it. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you visualize you, what you most want, what you most desire, you visualize it. 
And before you go to sleep, you visualize it, right? Mm -hmm. Before you know it, you get your wife the Jeep that she's always wanted, and it's all lifted and got tires and all kinds of things. <laughs> it's like, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you have good things for your wife and your kids and your family and for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So you and, are uh, another thing in doing that, in doing those things, though, you, you can't tell nobody about it. You can't say, oh, well, I got it. you just say, huh? We'll see. We'll see. I'm looking or we'll see or, you know, don't tell them what your plan is. You got to keep that in between you and the higher source. Mm hmm. The most high. The most high. That's awesome. Your ancestors above because they, they're here. They're watching us and they're helping us all. So what would be a message, um, an overall message that you had, you know, for the CW and and just anybody? I'm so happy I'm here. Oh, gosh. I got to let this come by the house real quick. That's your background. That's your background music. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, man. Background. I'm so I'm so glad to uh, be a part of this group because um, actually, Miss Karen, I don't know if you know Karen from um, Sarge's channel. No, I don't. Um, Miss K, he calls okay. her Miss K. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, you know icons, right? You ever heard of icons? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. channel. His channel. Yeah. yeah. That's that's how I found this uh, consciousness war. Oh, wow! I saw it with the blue star, and I was like, "What is this?" No, they're uh, they're really good people. Uh, I talked to Sarge and Karen. I talked to Karen on the. Uh, I try to talk to her at least, yeah, you know, every other week or so. But make sure she's okay. Cause she's up there in Sweden by herself, and she just. Yeah. Uh, lost her husband not too long ago and she's uh, going through some bad things right now with the I guess the government up there might be trying to take her house I don't know I might be saying too much. I'm just going to shut up right now that might be a little too personal so yeah. anyway but anyway uh, I'm hearing no, that um, a lot too though I'm hearing that yeah. a lot of different people with the, the problems with their property seems to be yeah progressing uh -huh. it's progressing I think they they want that. I mean, the IRS now is all armed armed up and stuff. So. Ah, they're afraid. Hey, you know, uh, it was so funny. Um, the first night I was on the live chat, I was talking to Estreos, and uh, was talking to him about how I was related to uh, President Eisenhower and Laura. Uh -huh. And the day after, lo and behold, I got this black SUV. It's all blacked out in my driveway uh and they can't get out because my dogs won't let them my dogs are like pretty much about to jump on their car doors and won't let them out but they're just sitting up here my wife was up here i was at work and she said she come running out here because they were uh she seen them through the window first and she said that they were just like looking out and trying uh, trying to drive around and look around or whatever at everything that, that's up here at my house and shit like that. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's all blacked out. Who the hell is it? She said, I don't know. So she ran out there before they could take off and stopped them. Uh -huh. said, you know, wh what do you want? Why are you here? You know? And they're like, oh, well, um, we're just looking for somebody. Oh, well, who are you looking for? Yeah. Uh, um, it's your my property. Yeah. Charlie Rector. Who the fuck is Charlie Rector, motherfucker? What? You got to Google that. Why the hell are you up in my house? <laughs> I just thought that was so weird uh, that that had happened right after that. It kind of got me a little paranoid because I know that uh, they had been after Laura there for a minute, but I don't care. You say her name. I don't care. I'm coming out with the truth. I'm actually, I'm actually of a, a Saxon bloodline of of royalty as well i'm, I'm native american uh, royalty i mean i've got all kinds of royalty in my blood and i encourage everybody to do their own ancestry and find their royalty in their blood because there, it's there it's all there everybody everybody's related to somebody mm -hmm. we're all family 
Well, I think, yeah, some families, you wonder why it is so, so disastrous that things happen to your family. Like for me, like well, my great grandfather, yeah. I've got pictures of him when he was a little kid. They had to dress him up like a little girl because they were uh, kidnapping young boys back in the late 1800s. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Like, even my grandpa Marvin was dressed up like a little girl. And that was, he was born in 1912. Oh, wow. And uh, they had to indoctrinate themselves in the Christian community in order to survive. They had to take on Christian names and all kinds of things. So, I mean, it's just like... The history is not there on Ancestry.com of my Native American uh, ancestry. But that's okay because I've got all, all the pictures my grandpa had. He gave it to my mother, and she just recently gave it to me. But it's just amazing to find out, you know, I, I encourage everybody to go to their, their grandpa or their mother and, and ask them, it, how much they know of, of their family tree and what were their professions and, and you know, things like that. I mean, I've, I've got a, a another uh, ancestor that was a snake charmer in a circus. Him and his wife were snake charmers in the circus out in California. Wow, that's different. I never heard that one. Right? Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. It's creepy. I don't like snakes. <laughs> Well, definitely, because you you see what what happens is a lot of our history. No one wants you to know who you are, because mm -hmm. we got with Native American people. Some people are Native American, right? But they're being they were labeled as black because you know they do yeah. like the pencil test or the paper bag test, and a lot of people still don't even know that. Yeah, as they come around with the census, and they would decide what race you are. And basically yeah. pretty much wipe out the who, you know, a lot of people as Native American, because now you don't have documentation. And if you don't have documentation yeah. of your history, then boom, you're no longer that. Yep. No you longer are. a part of the census. Yeah. That, you know, and I used to wonder why people hated the census so much. But yeah, the census would decide. This is probably all fake. Well, see, now, have you noticed that? Like, so now there's no such thing as, ah, uh, uh, they, they made a group of people Asian. So, like, oh, wow. if you were Arabic, you're now Asian. So, really? a lot of, uh, yeah, the, you can see that the, the, the statistics, things have changed on the labels, because now it's just basically Black, White, Spanish, and Asian. Huh. Right. They're changing, a lot. They're changing a lot of stuff and it's um, and they call it paper genocide. Yeah. That's a good name. There's no, uh, there's no documentation or the documentation is being destroyed on who, who a lot of people are. And so like even with my family, my great grandfather was murdered and his great and his wife was also murdered. And then oh, there wow. were people up that were murdered. There's people you know, and so then now your kids are being spread out and they don't know who you are and they don't know, you know, where you're from. Well, well it's good that you know that at least, you yeah. know, so the history of it, some right. some sort. Right. 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 Uh, we should encourage everybody to at least try to do some sort of digging on their ancestors as much as possible. I mean, I have gone all the way back and found my 63rd great grandfather. Okay, you've done some work. Yes, exactly. And I encourage everybody to do the same. So are you saying ancest you did that with Ancestry or did you get some help? <laughs> I did that with Duck Duck Go, believe it or not, and uh oh. all the other and all the other, you know, like okay, so I used Ancestry to a certain point because that's all that they would allow me to see, pretty much. You you feel me? Yeah. So you smell what I'm stepping in. <laughs> so anyway, I I would take that name that I was last left with and take it into the search box of DuckDuckGo. 
And lo and behold, I'd find out his mother and his father, and then I'd find out so on and so forth, you know. And I, I, uh, I went, this is on my father's side. So father's father, 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 father. I've gotten all the way to the 63rd great grandfather. And he is, uh, I don't think he's Roman, but he did appear in the Roman council or something like that. Mm -hmm. He was very well known. There's a, there's a fucking picture of him. I'll post it up on consciousness war or something like that. Uh, if anybody's interested anyway, I, I encourage everybody to do their own research though. I want them to do it. You know, do do yeah. your digging of, of yourself, of your own self. You know, this is amazing stuff that I found. And I'm just, you know, like, wow, you know, I'm finding myself in doing so as well. Right. You know, it's it's an it's another way of finding yourself, finding your journey, finding your path, and finding what suits you. Or, you know, you could just be wanting to do artwork. You, you may just want to do uh little wood doodles or something you know just sit there with a stick and a knife and just make some make a little mini sword or something i remember doing that i mean i've done all kinds of things i uh, i we, we should also try to learn something new yeah always always it's something learn uh, as far as a profession too i mean it doesn't matter i mean learn how to build a house learn how to build a car learn how to do a garden especially uh yes. especially yes. learn how to do things that are most important in, in yeah this life. so now we got the gardening group and i'm, I'm getting the ladies to tell me oh. why didn't these watermelons grow because i had a lot of i had my i had my uh tomato plants growing up into my trees how did you protect them from the animals? But well, we didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about that in, in the in the garden. You just tell yeah, me. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm like, hey, the peacocks what are doing all my stuff out here. I pulled uh, I'd pull a branch down and strip the leaves off of it. And then I'd tie the uh, thing to it, the um, plant, and then shimmy it on up, just bind it on up. And then eventually it just blossom and grow right up into the tree oh i see what you're and saying it's like the it's the best way for you know i uh, i guess uh instead of getting a, a stick or a stake and letting it wind up around it or whatever but you know there's other ways of uh, going about it too you can always get like a a, a, a fence uh, a little chain fence or you know uh was chicken wire chicken, chicken wire is really good Chicken wire is really good for, for that. Out of chicken wire. Chicken wire, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lindo, I appreciate all the the information that you're giving us. And it's gonna be so fun because we're gonna put this in the health section. Oh, cool. Parts of the ship. But uh good. we're posted on Women of the Stars, but we're gonna put it in the health section so everybody can really like look over these herbs. This is gonna be so great. I'm really looking yes. and I we doing more stuff. Yes, yes, we should. Yes, for, for real. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm gonna say goodbye, everybody. And we're gonna end this chat and you'll be talking and seeing Linda around. So if you do, holler at him and ask. He, he's got information about so much stuff. He's such a great resource. And I like talking to you because you're always talking Thank good you. sense. Thank you. I try to make sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody.